Hi, I'm Jason Gorb for ThatShelf.com, and we're here to look at Amused to Death, the uh, box set uh, celebrating the album from Roger Waters. Big Shelf. So, as many of you, if not all of you will know, Roger Waters is a founding member of Pink Floyd, their bass player, um, principal songwriter after Sid Barrett. Um, sort of uh, stepped away from that role, shall we say? Um, uh, and when, uh, uh, along with David Gilmour, uh, 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 they they sort of created this onslaught during the late '60s and early '70s of these incredible records um, done by Pink Floyd. Obviously, so much of that was this turbulent time amongst the actual bandmates. Um, resulting in a couple um, interesting projects, um, pros and cons of hitchhiking. For one, um, uh, is uh, the, ostensibly the first Roger Waters solo record, but I, I think it's an astonishingly excellent Pink Floyd record um, that just Pink Floyd didn't do. You have Eric Clapton doing uh, David Gilmour, but that's of course time for another uh, conversation. That certainly kept that sound. Then you have stuff like Radio Chaos, a much more sort of '80s-ish sound. And then the early 90s, when I was actually in university at the time, he came out with Amuse to Death, which again, I was uh, um, just starting second year, I was just starting, um, um, uh, I had shifted from English to poli sci, I would eventually end up in philosophy, but the point is that I was um, very politically active, very much following all the stuff, all the nonsense that had happened um, during uh, the first Gulf War. Um, and had felt this sort of the, the right level of indignation about the politics that you do when you're sort of at that um, a 19, 20 year old um, uh, age, as opposed to the old man that I am now. Um, and this album came out and the sound of it, the sonics of it, I just obsessed over. Um, this, is, this is one of those records in the way that Dark Side of the Moon would have worked for um, many, many people in the um, early 70s where they'd sit there with their headphones. This felt like a record for me, like it was contemporary. It was this new thing that spoke to me. The lyrics spoke to me. Um, the, the, the way the sounds worked, just absolutely uh, captivating. Um, it was mixed in this way that created this um, three-dimensional um, sense of space, um, which I absolutely just went gaga for it. it was my dream to one day have some sort of surround system again early 90s this was next to impossible um i use this cd um for testing to this day um um tracks from from this record um there's a very specific uh drum sound that sounds like it's cacophonous it sounds like a, a like a concert uh playing and and the thump of the bass drum um, I remember, again, 92, 93, I was actually designing my first um, uh, serious pair of loudspeakers. Um, and the test track that I had over and over again was a... <laughs> when you actually heard the hit and felt the hit, I knew I had something. When I bought my first deaf text, that's what I used. One of the first things that I played on my um, reference B&Ws is what I used. When I get new headphones, is something is... I know the sound of this record so very w well because... I lived this sonic landscape for so, so long. One of the things that they did um, after CD is that there's a really lovely surround mix of this that's sort of truly in a multi-channel form, takes some of the stuff that was hinted at in, in, in the stereo space. But um, again, because I know every, the placement of every um, instrument within this sort of virtual um, space that Q-Sound provides. That's the proprietary way that they had of mixing, so it sounded like the dogs were sort of parking behind you, etc. Um, I was really excited to actually um, get this eventually on vinyl, now that my analog setup is frankly uh, substantially better than my um, digital setup. This box set, I think I pre-ordered it two and a half years ago, something crazy like that, and I've just been waiting for it to come in. It's been out for a couple months. I was waiting to sort of consolidate some orders um, from Acoustic Sounds, but um, yeah, now I finally have it. Uh, the box itself is uh, relatively straightforward, just says Amused to Death. Roger Waters on the front and on the back. I have a sticker showing those analog productions. The box itself, um, as I'm about to crack it open, is sort of like, um, it's not like the UHQR boxes, you know, with the wood and all of that stuff, but it's very much like, um, um, some of their other sort of multi-disc uh, 45 sets, things like the Harry Belafonte, which um, you can actually see on another video on this channel when I celebrated the, the life and 
unbelievably remarkable career of Belafonte. But um, yeah, it's sort of a stri more straightforward box set uh, design as it were. And we're just cracking open and see how it is. I will say, big shout out to the people who did the shipping at Analog Productions. This thing was so overpacked, I couldn't have been happier. I have shipping materials that I'll use for sending um, other records that um, I, I, I may be getting rid of or sending to friends or whatever um, for months. It, it, um, the box came in this much larger box with um, some of the other things that actually got delivered and it did um, uh, absolutely flawless. So kudos to the shipping people because not every company gets that right. Okay, so inside here we have our box. And let's just crank open what we have here. So we have, and this is gonna be one of those funny things, I betcha. Yeah. So there's the gatefold of the Muse of Death, the giant big brothery, uh, uh, very Cronenberg-y um, uh, television on the front, uh, the sound of, uh, of a gatefold cracking open. Gonna close this carefully, the back, and then some packing material so that the stuff doesn't bang around. And inside, another gatefold. Because what we have here are, because it's split into four, four records, because it's 45 RPM, it would normally be two records at 33. We actually have twin gatefolds. So record one, record two. Um, and going through that, you can see this is side E, F, G, and H. Produced by Patrick Leonard and Roger Waters. So Patrick Leonard is a fascinating dude. Um, uh, did some amazing stuff in the 80s and 90s. I think he's just named not as familiar to people as I think he should be. Incredible, incredible um, musician and synthesis. He did a ton of stuff with Madonna. Um, and some amazing, amazing stuff. And yeah, him producing this. And again, mixed by James Guthrie, um, who's been for ever, it seems, the uh, Pink Floyd uh, mixing guy. So yeah, um, Ballad of Bill Hubbard, What God Wants, uh, Perfect Sense, Perfect Sense Part 2, Bravery Being at a Range, Late Home Tonight, Late Home Tonight Part 2, Too Much Rope, What God Wants Part 2, What God Wants Part 3. So very much, um, and that's just the, the first record, second record, um, uh, Watching TV, Three Wishes, It's a Miracle, and of course, Amused to Death. Um, so let's look at the records, but um, themselves. The gatefold, inside the gatefold, we have um, the full lyrics, which is wonderful. Yeah, there we are. Vocal EMI synthesizer intro bass by Roger Waters. Keyboards choir arrangement by Patrick Leonard. Um, yeah, it's just an amazing, amazing sounding record. Inside we have in the sort of mofi-ish um, sleeves, the sort of thinner rice paper sleeves, which I replace with the three millimeter ones. But the record itself looks pretty spotless. I see um, a signature right here actually nicely scrawled and that signature says Bernie Grunman <laughs> which is always lovely to see um hand etched the record looks absolutely flawless as one could expect I see no I'll look a little bit carefully but I don't see any particular seam splits or anything and yeah I have here I mean if I didn't want to keep it in a box I have here sort of two gatefolds that I could um easily just, just store it in that way and sort of be good with that, um, uh, wrap them, and then put the box somewhere um, safe. Again, there are people who don't really want this box and will just actually have it with the uh, gatefolds themselves. I'll probably keep it in the box because I'm slightly neurotic that way, but um, it's wonderful that inside the box you actually have proper, honestly, God sleeves. Um, Analog Production is actually really, really good at this, um, of, of providing you proper um, tip-on style um, uh, uh, record sleeves. So yeah, lots, <laughs> um, in a good way, uh, cut 45 and still lots of space there. It's probably very difficult to see in the light, but you can see where these sort of grooves end and you have uh, inner run out. Of course, running at 45 means you get a little bit more bass, a um, little better um, uh, reproduction of uh, lower frequencies, especially for vinyl, it's always a challenge because now you got more space, but also on the outside you actually get uh, more impact. So the more you can stretch it out over a number of records, the better it is. Yes, excuse me, I could do 33 RPM. Um, there are other versions that, that have that. Um, 
But the advantage of this is if I'm going to sit down and listen to vinyl anyway, I don't mind getting up and actually changing it. Otherwise, I would just listen to a digital. This is a digital recording. Um, and, and yet, because it's a digital recording, uh, it gives the opportunity of the mixing engineer to actually tweak it specifically for vinyl. And as I said, when you have a, um, uh, a decent enough analog um, setup, anything pressed to vinyl done by people who are really good at pressing the vinyl will actually um, often create a mastered version of the sound recording that is superior to the digital release because the digital release is designed for general consumers. It's not designed for people usually for critical listening. Yes, I have the Super Audio CD, which will do its thing, but again, my digital setup isn't quite at, on the par as the analog setup. And simply the, the change of going from one uh, medium to the other just means I get a different sound. I have both versions that I can go sort of back and forth and see which one I actually prefer. But I, for one, am very much looking forward to listening. I look forward to being amused by the things inside Amused to Death. That's our look, uh, our unboxing at the box set that I have been waiting literally years for. So it's wonderful to actually finally have it in my hand and be amused by it. Um, Giving money to Roger Waters uh, as a nice Jewish boy. Um, there are lots of people that think that that's foolish. We could get into all of that, but I'll simply say the fact that I appreciate he has his own political views. I don't necessarily agree with them, but I think musically this is something definitely for me well worth exploring. And I look forward, if I ever have the opportunity, to actually sort of challenge some of his more, let's say, errant views. Um, but uh, I'm still going to listen and I'm still going to um, take in the sounds as it is and accept the fact that as an individual I may not um, respect or completely buy in at everything that he actually does. But as um, a form of, of music, he has shaped me and his music has shaped me in decades in ways that I'm not going to simply dispose of simply because I believe, especially in his later age, he's simply looking to... Um, cause, cause uh, much consternation with some of the stuff that he says, which is, you know, for lack of a better word, just completely nonsensical. He's always had stuff to say at a, at a, at a much younger age. I responded to it much more. Um, at this age, I sort of see sort of the artificiality of some of his politics, but what has aged beautifully is the production, the sound, the playing, and the musicality of this record, and that's what I'm going to take from it, and that's what I will always cherish. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on social media, and we will see you next video. All the best. Take care.